Hello and welcome to episode 100 of the Swan Song Project podcast. Thanks for tuning in. We're very excited about this episode and uh, sharing it with you. Um, Swan Song Project is a charity. We're based here in Leeds, England, and we help people who are facing the end of their lives or dealing with a bereavement to write and record an original song. We believe in celebrating lives, making memories, and leaving legacies. If you'd like to find out more about the charity, you can visit our website, which is Swan Song Project at Codit UK. Uh, the podcast features songwriters, so for all of the previous 99 episodes, I've had a different songwriter on who's uh, shared with us one of their songs and told us about how they wrote it, and they've also shared a song uh, that's meaningful to them in some way related to bereavement. We wanted something special for episode 100, uh, and what we decided to do is to share some stories of people who've written songs with the Swan Song Project. So the other 99 have generally been professional songwriters, uh, but this episode we're going to share with you two stories, uh, two you know, conversations with people who came to the Swan Song Project to write their first songs, um, to write their swan songs, as, as, they, as they are. Uh, the first part features Richard Gibson, who wrote a song in memory of his son, Leo. Uh, and the second part features Mary Isdale, who wrote a song for her family, uh, called To The Stars and Back. Uh, yeah, it was really nice to speak to both of them again um, and to get a bit, more, a bit of insight of what it was like from their experience of writing a song for the first time in the difficult circumstances that, they, that brought them to the Swanson Project. Uh, I think you're going to find the conversations really interesting and really inspiring. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoy them. Thanks for tuning in. It seems uh, mad that we've got to episode 100. Um, and yeah, I'm very excited to keep the podcast going. So thanks a lot for your support. Um, if you're new to the show, I hope you enjoy it. Feel free to go back and listen to some previous episodes. Uh, please, yeah, like, share, subscribe and all that good stuff to help us keep it going and keep it growing. Um, but yeah, without further ado, is episode 100 of the Swan Song Project podcast. Enjoy. Okay, today I'm here with Richard Gibson. Thanks for joining me, Richard. It's great to be here, Ben. Great to talk to you again. Yeah, we're looking forward to this. This is the first time we've done this. This is a special edition of the Swan Song podcast where... Um, our guest is someone who's written a song with the Swan Song Project. Um, so we're going to hear hear about that, which is a very exciting thing for, for us to do. I'm excited to be doing a new version of the podcast and, um, but yeah, share some stories of some of the songs that we've been involved with writing over the years. Um, so over to you, Richard. Would you like to tell us a little bit about your uh, about your song? And then we'll so Richard's going to introduce the song, then we're going to we'll have a listen to it, uh, and then we'll talk a little bit about how we found writing, writing it and uh, things like that. But, yeah, over to you, Richard. Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks, Ben. My song's called um, Forever Young, open brackets, boy wonder, close brackets, and um, brackets were very important. <laughs> <laughs> and um, th this song was written for uh, my son, Leo, who died by suicide aged uh, 17 in 2021. Um, Leo was a big music fan. He was always listening to music. Um, whenever you saw him, he'd have uh, earbuds in. Um, you could hear the music coming from those uh, a lot of the time, quite loud. Um, but he was also a musician. Leo played the drums um, and he was also teaching himself uh, guitar as well. So um, when I uh, came across the uh, Swan Song project, it, this just felt like a perfect way of uh, honouring Leo's memory um, being able to write a song, um, which is obviously a musical, something that he loved, um, and a, a perfect way to get across some of the things that his family and friends uh, all loved about Leo. Uh, and that's really how I kind of went about trying to uh, build up the song and, and fill the song with those types of things. Yeah, beautiful. Um, so let's have a listen to it now, shall we? This is uh, Forever Young, open brackets, by wonder, close brackets. <laughs> <laughs> hey there, boy wonder, how did you get so tall? Striding out so confident, don't forget to call. You got your earbuds in, music pumping out so loud On your way to wherever to hang out with your crowd Walk 
walking around this lazy town in sunshine and rain, taking a long walk home down West Field Lane. Now those worn-out trainers are still on the whole floor. Your Harrington jacket hangs on the back of the door. Your electric smile, the twinkle in your eyes, the pulsing beat driving a dance and beat, lifts our spirits to the sky. Singing songs at the top of our lungs, keeping us forever young. Singing songs at the top of our lungs, keeping us forever young. Filled with the sound of our hero song Telling each other stories from our day just gone You were always willing to give more than you took A shoulder for us to cry on and down on our luck On hand with the jokes Till we cry tears of laughter Too young to be thinking of a life ever after Now we're twisting in the kitchen Tequila's hitting the mark Watching New Year fireworks Bursting over the park See your electric smile Pulsing beat, driving our dancing feet Lifts our spirits to the sky Singing songs at the top of our lungs Keeping us forever young Singing songs at the top of our lungs Future's night And when I wished you good night I didn't know I was saying goodbye Driving a dance and beat the 
lifts our spirits to the sky Now while your songs have been sung You will stay forever young All of your songs have been sung You will stay forever young Okay, brilliant. Yeah, that was um, Why Wonder. Um, yeah, it's a beautiful song, Richard. Um, how does it feel listening to it now? Uh, was it was it, it was last year we wrote it, wasn't it? Uh, it is, yeah. And I think actually it's probably 12, 12 months this month in June when we did the recording. So, wow. yeah, it's been out there for a year now. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, yeah, every, you know, I've not listened to it for, uh, for a while and... Um, obviously preparing for today, I had a, another listen through and then we've just heard it again there. Um, and I think, um, yeah, still really, really proud of it, actually. And, um, uh, you know, nothing but kind of fond memories of the uh, the creative process and the work that we put into it. Mm. I was thinking the same, listening to it back, it's um, it brings back such strong memories um, and like there's so much in it. Um, in terms of like there's so many of the details that like I remember you know, you're telling me the stories around mm. those details. So like in the song it's just it's what you know what a few words, but it's like that brings back such a um and obviously I never you know never met Leo but I feel like I know him um yeah. very well through the uh through the song and the work we did on that. Yeah, no oh, that's nice, good. Yeah. Um what was it like sharing the song with with so we yeah maybe we start with a bit about the writing process. Um so what do you remember about, about writing it and how did you find uh, find the process? Um, so I guess, it, it, I mean, it probably, it really started once I uh, became aware of uh, the Swan Song Project. I saw a, it was a roadside advert, I think, for, for the charity. And, um, uh, and as I said in the introduction, it, it, as soon as I kind of, uh, saw that it, it felt like the perfect uh, perfect thing for for expressing my uh, uh, my grief and my loss uh, and so from there I um, you know checked out the information on your website and started to listen to some of the podcasts um, I mean I talked about Leo's loving music uh, kind of as a family we listen to a lot of music some of us also play instruments Leo did uh, I play saxophone uh, for example and um, so, so music is kind of a big thing. So listening to the podcast and listening to how other songwriters go about writing songs, I just found really, really interesting. But that the the, the things that you talk talk about on there with other uh, songwriters and their hints and tips and advice was was a, a good starting point for me. I think so. I. Um, uh, after listening to a few of those, I kind of got the courage to perhaps get in touch and thinking, oh yeah, this is something I can um, I can consider and think about doing. So, um, a lot of the ideas um, came. Uh, probably most things came really when um, when I was driving into work. So it was part of my commute from uh, Bradford, where I live, into Leeds. Uh, in Yorkshire and um, for those who know it it can take a long time even though it's not a long distance <laughs> and uh, but every morning it, it always I don't know there's probably something about you, you're doing a different task when you're driving but and it kind of frees up your unconscious brain a little bit um, and um, I, I constantly find myself you know when I was, I was stuck in a queue or waiting at the traffic lights um, I had a notebook in my car and I was jotting down things which were coming to me. Mm. Um, and really that's how um, I started to build up build up the song. I think the um, the very first draft was quite rudimentary and that would have been the one that, that um, I brought to you on our first meeting, which was just um, some ideas really, and not knowing about um, some of the some of the technical aspects of songwriting. So it probably read more, more like a, a, a long poem in a way. 
you know, trying to get the rhymes in and those types of things. Mm -hmm. But but that was um, that that was the start of the ideas uh, and some of the structure and, and some of those things from that very early draft uh, pretty much made it through to the end. I think, um, although probably expanded out, there was, there's a lot more words in the final version than that first one. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so um, kind of freeing up my mind in, the, in that in that kind of way really helped from my point of view. And I'd get yeah. to work and I, um, in the first 10 minutes of work, I'd kind of write those up just to make sure they didn't get forgotten. And then uh, I'd work on them a bit later on when I got home at night um, and, and expanded on them a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good way to do it. Make sure you can, it's, 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 I think a lot of people get that where the ideas come to them when they're traveling in some form. And then it's so easy to not, to, I'm terrible for like, oh, I'll remember this and I'll write it down later and then I don't <laughs> all the time. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I can remember you you come in with the, with pretty much a full set. Yeah, I, I think a lot of that was, you know, did make it through um, to the final version of it. Um, and I seem to remember then what, what we were doing, like it was more just like, tweaking it to fit with with the music we were coming up with yeah. um which was i remember so we when we first got in touch with you you know told me you were a big bruce springsteen fan uh as i am so we talked a lot about springsteen didn't we and um That's bobby right. jean was a particular musical influence wasn't that well um, yeah and i i, I kind of took the it was it, it was the mood from that song that i was trying mm -hmm. to capture um it, it's kind of got a um uh, the, the sentiment was there and that, that so that's what I took as my starting point really to try and uh, emulate the mood of it a little bit um, it's quite a bittersweet song and um, uh, but it's quite upbeat certainly in it, mm. it musically um, and I think you know there was something about it's celebratory in a way it celebrates the relationship um, that the singer has got with Bobby Jean, and I wanted to celebrate Leo's life, but at the same time, acknowledging that um, he's gone and how sad that can be, but but wishing uh, wishing him well on his journey as well. And I think that was kind of the sentiment I was hoping to put into my song. Mm. Yeah, it's kind of um, very fortunate, I guess. That yeah, that so did that song was that song in your mind before you started. Putting putting the words down at all. Uh, yes, it was. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We find it's. I think it's always it's really kind of yeah, fortuitous when there's a song that kind of captures the you know, a similar essence of what you're trying to do, and then using that as a starting point. Um, and yeah, I don't, it's, and then it, like it often, I think people worry about doing that because they think they're gonna like just they're just plagiarizing, but it's not at all. Is it? It's completely. It's using. And I think then we use the chords from Bobby Jean as a starting point for the guitar part, but then like it's you know th so you can you can can you can if you, if you kind of know a lot about Bobby Jean and you listen to that song you're like oh there's you know a few kind of things that are similar but it's not it's not it doesn't sound like the same song at all does it? <laughs> no, it's not. No, mm. uh, and I think um, I mean certainly after Leo died we we put a playlist together as a family of. Uh, songs that were either some of his favourites or things that were about um, loss and grief and those types of things. Um, and I did use that as well. I'd, I'd listened to that. And I think, you know, again, not to uh, not to copy things directly, but it, it just gives you, um, oh, I like the the kind of the way that that's been expressed and, and you try and come up with something similar, but using your words, mm -hmm. um, uh, are expressing something in a, in a similar way. And I think um, there's another um, Bruce Springsteen song, You're Missing, um, mm. which, which kind of, it, it talks about um, all the little things in life that are still there when somebody doesn't come back. Um, and I think it talks about coffee cup on the counter mm. and uh, jacket on the chair and things like that. Uh, and when I started thinking about Leo's trainers, which were still in the hall, that that was mm. kind of trying to capture that, um, you know, that kind of everyday thing that's normal and everyday, and then all of a sudden um, it gets twisted completely on its head when that person's not coming back. Yeah, um, yeah that's another good way to do it, taking inspiration from a couple of different sources and then putting them together in a, in a unique way. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, so I remember that first my perspective working on you with song was was very easy because you'd had quite well you came with a lot of work already done. Um so sometimes people come to a session and it's you know, we're starting from scratch together of where to go. Um but you'd come with quite a lot of ideas and quite a lot of structure already. Um or like potential structure anyway. You'd had it wasn't just ideas, it was written um lyrically. Um and you had quite a clear musical sense of where you were to go as well. So then we started playing and but yeah, because I remember quite a lot of us sitting there with the guitar and like, how does it sound like this? And then there was lots of that. I was thinking of like shaving of like, you know, this line just doesn't quite scan with this chord thing. So let's just take a word out here and there. And yeah, yeah. Um, until we got it. And then you came to the studio and recorded it and um, put in the sax solo as well, didn't you? <laughs> uh, I did, yes. And uh, I, mean, I mean, I said earlier on that I play saxophone and um, it, it was, yeah, if possible, I was, I was really keen to include that if I could. Yeah. Um, uh, and and I'm, I was really pleased with it. Um, uh, I know we might come on to talk about some of the hard bits later, but then the challenges. But the um, uh, that was hard for me. I think um, coming up with what I was going to do there, and I spent mm. weeks and weeks practicing on an idea I had. But when I got to the studio, I didn't work at all. So <laughs> we ended up um, we ended up kind of freestyling, and um, it was probably so much better than it was uh, before. And so yeah, that was really good. <laughs> yeah it came out really well there yeah it's always really nice to include things like that when you can or if you've got an instrument that you want to add to it and the sax fits so well, so well with the song um it's a really good instrument for it um so yeah maybe we tell maybe we touch on that is there any any particular um things that you found difficult with the process any challenges for that um uh, process wise i think i mean you touched on one slightly there which is you know you you, you can come up with uh, a form of words that you're really pleased with and you want to express but they don't just quite fit in then with the music mm. that you've got and um, I think I found that hard at times just shaving off words here and there and moving them around and those types of things um, but I think in just about every every situation there we ended up with uh, something better than what we kind of started with and it, it just helps you to be a little bit more uh, um, disciplined around it, I suppose, might be the word, but um, mm. uh, and also maybe less literal as well, which, which I think can be good. So, so that 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 was hard. And um, the the other particular line, and it's in verse three about um, uh, my skin is charged with the essence uh, of your embrace, and that was a physical feeling that that I kind of had at the time and certainly much closer to the time after Leo had died that I really wanted to try and get in that was really quite personal and important for me. Mm. But I must have spent weeks and weeks trying to um, trying to get that across in a way that um, maybe people could make some kind of sense of at all. Mm. It was That was really, really hard. And so that was a very specific thing around the wording that I did find quite challenging mm. and it's that balance isn't it of sometimes it's you know um, changing lines so they are easy to sing and sometimes it's a line where it's like well this is really this is really important that it says this yeah. even if it's going to be more difficult to sing it but that's what it needs to say because that's what it is uh, and that's I always right. I always find that like trade-off really interesting of when mm. when do we need to change something or when do we just need to be like no this is the way it's going to go even if it's harder to sing yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. And other things, really, I think, um, yeah, it's just around um, uh, probably more to do with, um, well, we talked about the uh, uh, the saxophone bit, but um, just, uh, and it, it probably wasn't a challenge as, as much, but just, keeping it for every um you know constantly on my mind i think that mm. made it easier to keep coming back to um uh, and because it was something i was really um engaged in and uh, got a lot of um uh, you know i was really invested in it that that wasn't difficult i suppose but um uh, keep you know keeping it at the forefront for forefront of my mind and even when um, you know, I might be driving into work, but ideas are coming. I was still kind of listening to 
um, listening to other songs and things that, that maybe might have uh, helped in that way as well. Mm. Do you remember how long it took us to do your song from start to finish, was it? Um, I, um, I did go back and have a quick look because I was interested in that myself. Yeah. Actually. It was about five months. So five we months. first met in February last year and then recorded in, recorded in June. Um, and um, I think the final version I sent you was version five, but there were um, even draft two and draft three, they would have had draft 2.1, 2.2, <laughs> you know, but smaller tweaks, I guess. Yeah. But certainly okay. structure-wise, um, things changed uh, and into different drafts. So, yeah, I suppose, you know, as some kind of advice is just kind of keep going there's always locks in there and and you know and things you can keep working on and every time I thought it was oh well that bit's done and then, you know you'd come up with another idea and then you'd go back to it and think well I really want to put that in now which means <laughs> something we've got to lose something <laughs> <laughs> yeah I thought yeah. um the chorus was another interesting uh part of it for me because um I, you may remember the uh, the first draft didn't have a chorus at all, um, and I'd never really even considered it. And you know, some of my favourite songs don't have choruses, so maybe mm. it was a bit unconscious in that way. But um, uh, yeah, when you when you pointed that out, and uh, I thought, oh, I've got to go away and write write a chorus, and I think that that did take a little while to mm. uh, to settle on, uh, if I remember rightly. Um, but then that forever young idea um, and then played around with that in the chorus. And um, I quite like, I quite liked having that a little bit more upbeat. And I think that balances out some of the heavier lyrics in the, in the verses. So I was, I, yeah, I was really pleased with that in the end. Mm. Uh, although that, that did take some, uh, that did take some doing as well. Yeah, I guess because Bobby Jean doesn't have a chorus either, does it? So if that was your main influence, it, <laughs> it wouldn't have. Um, and yeah, sometimes I think it's like when you might making a decision musically. So I think I can't, I can't remember if that was why we did it. If it was like, it feels like it needs a section, which is has that kind of lively bit to it. Um, but then like if you've been thinking of it from the lyrical perspective of this is what I need to say, then to think from a perspective of, but musically it needs to do so. That means I need to think of something else to say, but that's fitting this different uh, musical element. It can just kind of shift in your brain a bit of what you're, uh, what the, of, of this part of the process that you're working on. Um, so yeah, that's really interesting to hear. Mm. Um, yeah, brilliant. Thanks, Richard. Um, any other tips or advice for anyone else who might be, um, you know, considering writing a song uh, for the first time? Well, I, I certainly think having um, having something close to hand, regular to um, to to make notes on, and, and I know a lot of your other songwriters have said something similar. Um, I would have lost so much good stuff if I was relying on my brain to <laughs> remember it from the morning all the way through my work day, and then getting home and writing it down. So, jotting that down either on a a, a notebook. Um, that you keep with a small notebook that you keep with you. It doesn't have to be big, and you don't have to, you know, you just need to capture the kind of the the key elements of that, or using your phone or what, or whichever's kind of most easier. Uh, and I use that a bit more now. I think since writing this song, occasionally I'll get other ideas, and I, I've I've um, I've not finished any other songs yet, but <laughs> um, I do have other ideas floating around, Thanks. which um, you know, just from a creative thing just to help um you know as a fun thing to do i I'd, i have kind of kept um kept kept that in a way so so that's probably my um my biggest advice uh or tip for what i found anyway certainly from uh from writing brilliant yeah thanks a lot richard um yeah i'm glad to hear that you're still writing uh and it's uh it is one of those things where i think a lot of time people songwriting people do think about the the end product rather than just like the just writing is great fun um mm. and and generally really good for you i find that i feel better when i'm writing regardless of whether I'm finishing songs or not um it's a good practice to do just for just in and of itself yeah great stuff um yeah well thanks for thanks a lot for your time richard and uh for anyone listening if you want to listen to richard's song again you can do it on the swan song project website 
um, and I'll put the link in the description. Okay, that was part one of episode 100 of the Swan Song podcast. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I certainly enjoyed that conversation with Richard. Um, it was really nice kind of reminiscing a bit about what it was like writing that song. You have very fond memories of working on the song with Richard. We got along really well and it was a really nice um, song to work on. Um, what it says, well, Richard has since gone on to join the Swan Song Project trustee board, which is brilliant. So he's kind of adding to our uh, development as a charity. And it's really nice to have people who have, you know, who've come to the service as a participant, then involved with the leadership of it and helping us make decisions going forward of how to best reach more people. Uh, so yeah, it's a great conversation, and yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you did, uh, please consider you know donating to the Swan Song Project. We are a charity, and we are a small charity, uh, and funding is always an issue for us. We don't charge anybody for our service. Uh, it's completely free to anyone um, who's you know terminally ill, uh, bereaved, or expecting a bereavement, anticipating a bereavement in a way. So often we work with family members who have a, a loved one who's dying. Uh, we help them to write their songs and record them, and we don't charge for that because we. We, you know, fundraise uh, from the public and, you know, we get some support from various grant makers, but we do rely a lot on public donations. So if you are in a position to help support us, uh, it'd be very much appreciated. The link to the website is in the description of the episode, where there's also links there where you can make a donation. Uh, and it's, yeah, very much appreciated if you can. Uh, part two features a woman called Mary Isdale. Uh, Mary's an amazing woman. She's um, She has terminal cancer uh, and came to us to write a song, I think it was last year. She didn't write with me personally. She wrote with one of our team, Jamie Roberts, who's a fantastic songwriter. Um, and I, I came to the recording session when she came to our studio in Leeds to record, which was really nice. It's when I first met her. Um, so this was really nice to hear a little bit more about the process of what that was like uh, during the writing of it. Um, so yeah, I think you're really going to enjoy it. It's very moving. And Mary has, um, yeah, she has a very great like, great philosophy on um, her appreciation of life since the diagnosis. So yeah, it's a very inspiring conversation. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. So yeah, this is part two of the uh, episode 100 of the Swan Song Podcast. Enjoy. Okay, welcome to part two of episode 100 of the Swan Song Podcast. Uh, for this part, I'm joined by Mary Isdale. Thanks for joining me, Mary. Hi, thank you for having me. Yeah, now we're nice to see you again. I'm looking forward to talking to you a bit more about your song. Um, so yeah, do you want to uh, introduce your song for us, uh, Mary? Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm Mary and... I um, was diagnosed with um, an incurable advanced stage bowel cancer um, and I really had a lot of moments where I, 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 I just I wanted to tell my family and my loved ones all the things I needed to say in case I was no longer here or when, when that happens. Um, and I didn't really know how to go about it. And I kind of stumbled across the Swan Song Project, very luckily. Um, I'm not a mu musical person. I, I listen to lots of music. I love music, but I am in no way musical. Like, I've never played anything other than maybe the triangle at primary <laughs> school or, you know, that type of thing. Um, I'm not a writer. Um, and I thought, ooh, that seems like a far stretch um, to write a song. But anyway, it, 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 I thought, right, let's just give it a go, because I do want to get my words to my family and loved ones down in some kind of concrete form. Um, so the song Ideas, um, I my favourite film of all time is The Wizard of Oz. Um, I spent probably the first five or six years of my life just watching it on repeat with my mom in the background so we've seen <laughs> the wizard of oz several thousand times probably and i used to just go around singing it continually so it's something that like my family and especially my mom really associate with me if they hear that song um somewhere over the rainbow or see anything wizard of oz related they instantly think of me and mm. um, so I kind of wanted something to do with with that in there um and I also um kind of 
did it a bit chronologically because there was stuff like I felt like I wanted to say about the past and the life that I've had, the great life that they've given me, the joy, all the happiness, my great childhood and all the stuff pre-cancer that I wanted to like address to and just express my gratitude to them um, in a way um, and talk about all the good stuff from the past then address to like the present stuff that's going on and the challenges that I face and how they support me and get me through all the stuff that I go through, all the chemo, all the operations. I mean, I have chemo every two weeks and I've had a lot of it, 180 odd cycles of it and four big operations and stuff. There's a lot, it's very intense. Um, and every single bit of that, it's my family and my loved ones that get me through. They're what make they're my driver to take each bit of the the pain. Every time I turn up at the chemo suite, it's for them because I want to live my life for them. Um, so I just wanted to let them know that my mum and family often say they wish there was something they could do for me, and they feel helpless and. Like they can't do much to help me, but nothing could be further from the truth. Yeah. Um, so I wanted them to know that and hear that um, about the present stuff. And that even though it's it's a challenge in life, it's still a really beautiful life that I have with them. Um, and then a little bit about the future, um, the inevitable future, whenever that time may be that I won't be around anymore there were some really important things that I wanted to say to them um that I don't want to be the source of their like devastation I don't want their lives to end if mine does that's mm. like the last thing I would want for them I want them to to go on I know they'll be pain and upset and they'll miss me and various things but I don't want it to be like I don't want to be the reason for their lives not to go on because life's for the living and that would make me really sad if if that's what happened so I wanted to tell them all those those things um, and it's hard for me to say that in a conversational way to them because whenever I would broach those types of conversations about future it, it you know people don't really want to talk about it or think about it and it never got said, but it was important for me to say it. So I yeah. kind of did like that, a little bit of past, present and future, a little bit of Wizard of Oz stuff. And yeah, I just I just thought, I sat down, you know, occasionally and just thought about my family and my loved ones and in the terms of past, present and future. And it all just like poured out really, loads of stuff. Like, and it was just, the pen was just, going and I was just writing all these little bits down um and then on top of that every time I would like go in the car little bits would come or I sometimes would wake up you know like yeah. dreaming <laughs> of these like little phrases and lyrics and I always had like a a notebook or my, my notes on my phone and I would just quickly like note them down before I'd forget um yeah and it just kind of came about from there that was the sort of theme and the idea of the song and uh and, and the wonderful Jamie helped uh shape that into how it fits music musically and uh, and do, done all the beautiful yeah music and everything and and and, and crafted it into from raw ideas and bits of notes on paper and lyrics written down kind of was, it almost became a poem from my side um, and then he made that into uh, a song, which was oh. magical. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, and you came to the studio here in Leeds to, and you did a great job singing it as well. Uh, um, well I don't know. I gave it a go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, you did a great job. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, let's have a listen to it now, shall we? This is To the Stars and Back uh, by Mary Isdale and yeah, Jamie Roberts, uh, who worked with you on it. Um, and yeah, we've got a lovely video which Jamie did when you came to the studio. Uh, so we'll have a look at that now as well. Oh, um, <laughs> <laughs> to the stars and back. 
the main point, sorry, <laughs> no brain. the main point to the stars and back is what me and my family have said to each other since our my whole life and how we sign off all our text messages to each other and stuff. We always say, love you to the stars and back and much more, love you to the stars and back. And we, and we all try to outdo each other with <laughs> how far the, the expression goes. It's just a, a way to show like, uh, how much we love each other but we, it's it's our little family phrase and we've always said it and that's why that's all in there about the stars and back <laughs> cool let's have a listen to it now then thank you for all the happiness and joy throughout the year Every time you made me smile and wiped away my tears Giving me every opportunity, every single chance You've brought me to this party and you showed me how to dance So thank you for each and every magical day and for your unconditional love each step along the way I love you to the stars and back much, much more Till the oceans all run dry and the waves don't hit the shore Till the planet stops turning and the earth is standing still I love you to the stars and back I do And I always will When times got tough you always kept on giving You made my life a life still worthy times just my being there you're the oxygen that gives me life when there isn't any air so thanks for all you are and everything that you do i'm still loving this party cause i'm dancing alone. I love 
and us will stay entwined No matter what, we'll never be apart the stars and back even if I'm somewhere over the rainbow <laughs> oh. Okay, beautiful. Yeah, that was um, to the stars and back. Yeah, it's um, it is an amazing song, Mary. It's, it's, uh, it's a lovely video as well, what Jamie made um, for the recording. Um, and yeah, I think all, your, all the things that you were talking about beforehand, like your your aims of it. Yeah, you know, I think you you nailed all of them. <laughs> and mm -hmm. um, one of the things that I think is so special about a song is, yeah, as you were saying, there's all like there's, there's a lot of things that you wanted to say. And you kind of mentioned how difficult it would have been to sit down and to go through all that with someone in a conversation. Mm -hmm. But when you can package it up in a song, it kind of, you know, there's there's so much in there, isn't there? Mm -hmm. And it's so it's so so much easier for people to then go back to it and to take it all in at different phases. And the I think the party metaphor for it mm -hmm. is such a beautiful way of doing it. Um, how did that come about? Was that oh I love a good party. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah no, I am. Um... I just I feel like um life is you know it doesn't go on forever and it's it is a bit like a good party or a good holiday or whatever it's got a beginning and an end and and it, everything in between is hopefully absolutely amazing and the, the when you're on a holiday or a good party you don't be, you don't feel sad that there's going to be an end to that you just enjoy what it is for what it is knowing that there is a beginning there has been a beginning and there will be an end to it like they don't go on forever parties and holidays you just enjoy it while it's there and for the moment and uh yeah life is no different really it has a beginning it has an end and all the stuff in the middle is the great stuff and try I, I try not to spend too much time thinking about the end and let that take away from the enjoyment of what a wonderful life it is because everyone will will come to that it's just whether it's sooner or later but you can still have an absolute great time at the event that you're at and the event is life you know and it's a bit like a party in that way enjoy it have a, a great time with the people who you love that that are around at the time and and enjoy it every single moment in, in its present you know live in the present really and enjoy it um and same when I'm when my party ends if I have to go home early from the party I, I kind of think of it like that we're all at a party together me and my family and my loved ones are having a great time and then some of us you know get a little bit tired or whatever and have to leave a bit early but the others we don't all switch off the music and and just all go to bed because somebody has to leave a little bit early we you know we wish they were there we miss them but we, we raise a toast to them and have a little dance on their behalf and let them live vicariously through us carrying on um in the party and then and then everyone else leaves when it's their time to leave so yeah that's kind of my way of my simple view on life maybe <laughs> <laughs> no it's a beautiful it's a beautiful way of looking at it mary and um it's one of the things that you know you find a lot don't you that people like getting a, di a diagnosis gives you that greater sense of appreciation for the time that you have and present you know, yeah. yeah and it helps you to really enjoy it um mm -hmm. Was that way of describing it something that came out since your diagnosis? Or have you, have you always kind of had this kind of viewpoint? Or is it something that you've... No, well, before my diagnosis, I'd never really thought about it. In yeah. fact, life was kind of passing me by in a way. I wasn't living in the present at all. Um, it ironically took for being told that I was dying before I really started to live. Um, because 
I was living what I thought was life, but it was very much, you know, um, career, job, doing things in, in the right way. Mm. Um, and you've only got a finite amount of time, don't you? So any time that you're doing them things is time that you can't be with your loved ones doing other things. And I didn't see my parents nearly as often as I would have liked to or should have. Um, they lived in Scotland at the time and I lived down here in Manchester and I only saw them every couple of months um, just because life was so busy. And loads of events passed me by because I was working and I was busy and even me and my husband <laughs> didn't see each other that much because he was insanely busy with work and so was I and we were kind of ship like ships that passed in the night sometimes. And then when I was diagnosed, and because I thought I've got all the time in the world, oh, I'll do that next year, oh, I'll do that, you know, in 10 years time, oh, I'll do that when I retire, I'll do it. And then suddenly it was like, oh, right, okay, life is, life is, is now, it, life isn't a, a, a dress rehearsal, I'm not like, I felt like it, up to that point I had kind of just been going through the motions of living um, with the the aim of like everything very much focused on in the future mm -hmm. I'll do that in the future I'll do that later I'll do that next year and then it suddenly became like oh well next year might not come so okay let's change the focus what's actually really important to you right now and let's do that right now um, and just be in the present and yeah the, the important thing to me right now is spending as much time with my family as possible. My mum and dad moved in from Scotland. We pretty much, they live between here and my sisters and we, we see each other all the time. We're a really close family. Um, I see my husband now, which is a novelty. Um, <laughs> and we, on my good days in between chemo, um, when I'm well enough and stuff, we, we just spend loads of time together doing really nice stuff and having really good experiences and creating really good memories and although my time might be a lot shorter than most people's um I feel like the the quality of the time that I've got is huge compared to what it was pre-diagnosis um I've spent more time with my family and done more things since diagnosis and made more memories since diagnosis than I ever did in the in the in the years before that when I was healthy and thought I had forever mm. because I wasn't living in the present I was living all for the future so, yeah yeah um, yeah well that's great that you've um got such a high quality of life now when you're uh, on your good days yeah. um if we just touch on the the writing of the song again a little bit yeah. um so you wrote with with yeah with Jamie Roberts and mm -hmm. you did it over over zoom together didn't you yeah, yeah, we did yeah. it on Zoom, um, and it worked really well, um, actually. And the first time I met him in person was when I came to the <laughs> studio, which was lovely to meet him finally. I felt like I knew him by that point. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, we had like a sort of weekly meeting scheduled in, um, which which I loved. It gave me something to look forward to each week. Um, in amongst the cancer chaos and all the appointments yeah. and stuff, it was just something really different to focus my mind towards, um, something positive and uh, a real big distraction from all that. Um, so it was a really positive thing in my week. Um, and and we... it gave me things to, you know, work towards, still like a goal and, and things, because I knew I'll be meeting Jamie, I better you know, get some things written down and, and mm. think about this. And it gave, gave me some purpose and something to plow my energy into and to focus on, which was a really positive thing. Um, and yeah, he was he was great, Jamie. Every week, dead friendly, dead easy to talk to and, and, and bounce ideas off and um, kind of started off with me explaining about, you know, the love you to the stars and back, had to be in there something about wizard of Aussie type of thing had to be in there um and about the past present the future type thing um and yeah and it all just kind of went from there but he did this really clever thing with the wizard of Oz thing at the end of mm. the song incorporated this 
the, the tune of uh, Somewhere Over the Rainbow into the end. And it was, and I thought it was, that was a really clever thing that he did. And it was, it really made the song. Uh... Yeah, yeah, it worked really well, didn't it? And um, so then, so you did you just come up with all that stuff at the start about these are the kind of important things you want in it. And then, like, did you go away and write more about each of them individually? And you started yeah. to, did you structure it like, um, lyrically yourself or was that a bit uh, of working together yeah yeah no I, I I kind of most of it I think I mean we, we came up with those ideas initially and then I went away and and wrote it and it like I say it became like a, a poem I guess I, I wrote most of that but it did flow really well like it just came out of me really like yeah. when I just thought about the things I wanted to say um and you'd written poetry before hadn't you I've done bits of poetry, yeah, yeah not so. just just for fun, not not professionally or anything. But yeah, I have done little bits of poetry before, so it came, it became more like a poem. Um, and then I would take little bits to. Uh, there was actually, I mean, it's a long song as it is, isn't it? I've got a lot to say. Um, <laughs> but there was actually a little bit more to it as well. There were other bits that we could have used, and we had to sort of then go through it and. So chop chop it so it wasn't going to become like a 10 minute long song you know <laughs> um and he made the sentences some of the sentences were like too long to fit with the, the beat and the music and stuff so he would make it work and say can we take this little bit of the sentence out without changing the meaning mm -hmm. um, he was very careful about that he'd be like I don't want to do anything that's affecting the actual meaning of what you're saying or the content as such I just want to take out any words that you know that are extra additional words that that don't need to be there but don't take away from the meaning at all of what you're saying and it, so yeah I think most of it um and in fact all all the lyrics were were from me um and then he sort of adapted them to make them bit with the music um and edit and chop bits out and shorten it and move things around structure it in a better way or things like that mm -hmm. um and each week we'd we started off with the words and then we thought about the music and what type of music I might like and um he, he would he would like play his guitar and try and like sing sing along and ask me how do you think that sounds or do you mm -hmm. prefer this or do you prefer that and yeah it was it was good it was nice oh, brilliant yeah um was there anything that you found challenging about the process or anything like unexpected about it um I actually thought it was going to be a lot more difficult than it was Jamie made it such a a good process um for me at the beginning of it like say I I thought there's no way I'm going to be able to come up with a song but okay yeah trust in the process let's see um but I really I didn't think it would be possible and it it, it was within such a short space of time as well um, and how long yes how long it took um, I think it was like once a week for about five weeks, I think. We had about five sessions, I think. Um and yeah, it and then I was in the studio, next thing I knew. <laughs> <laughs> um and it was all done via Zoom as well, and it which was like, Oh, how can you I don't know, I'm gonna be able to actually produce a song first of all and <laughs> a song in five weeks and a song in five weeks via zoom like this all sounds <laughs> anyway but let's go with it let's try it <laughs> um and it, and it did it worked really well yeah brilliant um do you have any tips or any bits of advice for anybody else who might be um interested in writing a song for the first time i think just go for it like like i was saying just trust in the process if you're there and you think, oh, I'm not a songwriter, I won't be able to do it. Yeah, I, I thought that too. Um, <laughs> this, and just trust in this one song and their genius and their music <laughs> and their musicians. Um, they, they will guide you. 
um and yeah just go for it have it it's such a reward and um thing to do it, it gave you know it gave me such a lot um and my family like um gave me a little bit of a sense of control felt like everything was out of control but I could control what I was saying within the song and what my legacy would be with that sense of achievement um and took a lot of worries off my mind as well I used to worry a lot about have I told my family enough will they remember my words will they remember my voice um and then once the song was done it really like made me feel quite content and it's massively important for my family as well. Um, they they really really um they listen to it a lot, and they've they've always got it there for for future. So yeah, just it, it really is such a good thing uh, to do, um, both for yourself and for any loved ones or or anything like that. Um, and just go for it. Uh, trust in the process. Go for it. Um, and have a notebook handy at all times. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. you down when you wake up from a dream and you've you've thought of something, <laughs> or if you're in the car and you think of something, just yeah, note note things down. But I think yeah, just have the confidence in in in, in even start in the process. Once it starts, once you get the ball rolling, hopefully, if your experience is like mine, you'll find that it really does sort of snowball and and you're guided and it, it, it you're just astounded that in after like five weeks you've made a song it's like wow <laughs> <laughs> brilliant um yeah thanks a lot marion yeah um well done again it is, it's a great song and i'm uh so glad that you enjoyed it so much and that your family uh obviously uh, get a lot out of it as well yeah they do and yeah. it means a lot to me that i know that you know even if I'm no longer here, they can still hear my words of the things that I need them to know. They can keep yeah. me listening to it. It's, so it gives me a lot of peace and, and contentment. And um, yeah, it's, and it means a lot to them. And to have you singing it as well. Um... Exactly. You know, yeah. um, I used, like I say, spent the first like five or six years of my life continually singing <laughs> over the rainbow and uh and my whole life after that singing it in the shower um so my mum is like like so I feel like even if I'm no longer here she'll still feel like I'm just in the next room yeah. like um, in the shower and give her a bit of peace maybe hopefully yeah yeah brilliant um yeah, thanks a lot, Mary. Um, it's really nice chatting to you again and hearing more about your song. And uh, if anyone listening, if anyone wants to listen to Mary's song again, um, I'll put the link in the description that the song is on the website along with that video. And there's a lovely blog Mary wrote as well uh, about her experience that you can read as well if you'd like to. Um, so yeah, thanks a lot, Mary. No, no, thank you. And thank you to everyone at the Swan Song and Jamie for, for helping me with it. Uh, it really does mean a lot. Oh, yeah, you're very welcome. Um, and thanks for tuning in, everyone. I'll be back with another episode soon.